the endurance, drive, stimulate, and spirit, encourage, envision, growth, activate, motivate. A couple of days back, I was selected to participate in the Modern World Debates, a massive worldwide debate championship. And this competition was round-based. So in the first round, the motion given to us, the topic given to us, was this house regrets the popularity of violent female superhero movies. Now, my team and I were side proposition for this motion, which meant that we were for this motion. So the meat of our argument was based upon the premise that violent female superheroes are negative role models because, well, they're violent and they use harmful means of destruction to find solutions to their problems. And in this process, they are extremely hypersexualized. On the other hand, what my team and I suggested was that we change this definition of what a superhero is depicted as in our movies that we watch. So we suggested that superheroes are female scientists, mathematicians, and astronauts, women that use their knowledge and words to change society and not their fists. Now, I was pretty happy with my speech. However, my smile turned upside down when a speaker from side opposition came up and asked me something. He asked me, would you rather live in a world where women were shown to be cooking in the house, cleaning the kitchens, and watching their kids? Or would you rather live in a world where women were shown to be violent and in this process, unfortunately, hypersexualized? And to that, I had to say that you can't compare these two depictions of women because in no way is one better than the other. Because a damsel in distress is equally as worse as a violent woman because that is not the true depiction of what a woman is. And that got me pondering. Why is it that we live in a society where girls and women like myself have to turn to violent women to look for our role models in comparison to women in STEM? STEM being science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And that's when I realized we have a problem. You see, according to data from the World Bank, women make up 50% of the world's population. However, women make up only 30% of the entire STEM workforce. And further research showed me that by the age of 15, girls tend to lose their confidence in STEM subjects, which is completely unlike their male peers. And what's even jarring is the fact that when a group of 16-year-old girls is asked to draw a scientist, only 25% of them will picture a female scientist. Now you see, this lack in confidence is in no way inherited. However, it is a direct result of the unique challenges women face while trying to pursue a STEM education or a STEM career. And these challenges range all the way from a lack of representation to a lack of recruitment because of fixed mindsets and implicit biases. So now, the big question that's left with us is that how do we overcome these obstacles? And most importantly, how do we engage more girls in STEM despite these challenges that cease to exist? So the first solution that I have to offer is that we start talking about and celebrating the female role models in STEM that we know of. Because most of the girls interested in STEM don't know of a woman in a STEM career because of the sheer lack of representation. So, in, in, in the case that we're talking about chemistry, it is important that we talk about Marie Curie as much as we talk about Dmitry Mendeleev. And when we're talking about biology, it is important that we highlight Rosalind Franklin as much as we highlight Watson and Crick in our textbooks. Moving on, the second point is that we start fostering confidence in STEM subjects in girls. So 
the reason that is because many studies show that girls tend to a fixed mindset when it comes to STEM subjects. A fixed mindset is that of, I won't be able to succeed because I simply lack the skill or the intelligence to pursue through this struggle that I'm facing. So it is important that we as girls remind ourselves constantly and other girls out there trying to pursue STEM that struggle is an important part of the learning process. Because with a growth mindset, instead of a fixed mindset, we too can persevere through these intellectual challenges that we face just like our male counterparts do. Because you see, the future of science, conservation, innovation, and technology is completely dependent on the unique contributions and ideas that we bring onto the table. So in order for us to create and in order for us to innovate, we really need a diverse range of people bringing their unique backgrounds, experiences, and exposures to the table. And that's how we're going to innovate. And when we have that barrier of gender, what we're doing is we're essentially reducing our capacity of producing the best possible outcome that can be. Lastly, it is important that we as women remember that we too can pursue any of those careers in STEM just like boys and men can. However, I understand that this can be difficult given the sheer lack of representation. So a tactic I like to personally use is building my own support group. So my support group consists of my parents, my teachers, my family members, friends, and even classmates. These are people that support me throughout the unique challenges that I face in my journey through STEM. Girls and women can be whoever and whatever they want to be. However, we still see more boys and men in the STEM field. And this is because many girls and women self-select out of STEM because of the gender stereotypes that they're conforming to. So we really need to make it normal for girls to be interested in STEM and developing positive links and establishing links to positive female STEM identities is a huge driving force that pushes girls to see and realize from that there are these really cool jobs out there. It has been proven time and time again that we as women in no way lack the skill or the intelligence to succeed in the STEM field. However, what we do need are resources and equal opportunities. Only then can we excel like no other and bring about changes in our societies. Because we as women have been able to create technologies that have won Nobel Prizes like Jennifer Dodna did with it Jennifer Dodner and Emmanuel Charpentier did with CRISPR-Cas9, all the way to sending probes to Mars, like the UAE's 50% women-led hope mission. So it is important that we as women and everyone sitting here empower, inspire, and connect as many young girls and women as we can in STEM, because that is how we develop our confidence in our abilities, and that is how we are going to swing the STEM pendulum in our favor. Thank you.